Then I have Amy Potter. Uh, hi, I'm Amy Potter. I work for St. Louis County, um, same as Leslie, partnering with the Northern Lights Special Ed Co-op. Great. And then Jessica. Hi, I'm Jessica Knutz, and I'm the Secondary Transition Coordinator with Northern Lights Special Ed Cooperative. Awesome. And then Liz. Hi, everyone. My name is Liz Roach. I'm a Vocational Rehabilitation Counselor for VRS. Uh, primary tra transition caseload with Edina and Mon Tonka. That's right. I was trying to place. Okay, um, then Bruce. Hey, I'm Bruce Bach. I'm a placement coordinator with Vocational Rehab Services in Duluth, and I'm working with uh, Northern Lights Cooperative. Great, thank you. Um, Megan, or I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong, Megan? No, you had it right, it's Megan. Okay. Um, so I'm Megan Nelson. I'm uh, a vocational rehabilitation counselor. Um, out of the Chaska office, I have a transition caseload and I serve the Eden Prairie School District. Thank you. And Yolanda. Hi, I'm Yolanda Pullman. I'm the vocational rehabilitation counselor in Alexandria doing transition. Thank you, Yolanda. Um, Karen. Good afternoon, I'm Karen. I work out of the Wilmer Volk Rehab Office, and I get to work with the amazing Kim Ness from the Wilmer High School. Oh, that's, I love that. And then the other Karen. Hi, I'm Karen Bryant. I'm with uh, Douglas County Social Services, and I supervise the Developmental Disabilities Unit. Thank you. Uh, Andrea. Hi, I'm Andrea Cheerhart. I'm the Volk Rehab, uh, Volk Rehab Services RAM for St. Cloud and Alexandria offices. Great. Sonia. Hi, I'm Sonia Venice, and I'm the manager for the Volk Rehab office in Duluth and Cloquet, partnering with uh, Northern Lights. Thank you. And I'm sorry I mispronounced your name. Um, Tiffany. Hi, I'm Tiffany Pearson. I'm a waiver case manager up in Lake County in Two Harbors, and I'm also partnering with Northern Lights. Oh, yay, wonderful. Uh, Amanda. Hi, everyone. My name is Amanda Cook. I'm the Assistant Director of Special Education for Intermediate District 287. Thank you. Tabitha. Hi there, I'm Tabitha Cremain and I supervise um, Children's Mental Health at Douglas County Social Services in Alexandria, Minnesota. Oh, great. Um, Sarah. Sarah I'm Sarah Richards. I'm the Assistant Director of Student Support Services for Alexandria Public Schools. Great, thank you. Uh, Ann. Let's go to Sarah Gutzman. Or I didn't know if you were talking to someone, Anne. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, couldn't get to, I couldn't get to my mute button, sorry. <laughs> I'm Go Anne right ahead. I'm a social worker with 287. Thanks, Anne. And then to Sarah Gutzman. Sarah Gutzman, RAM for Hennepin South in Bloomington and Carver County in Chaska for vocational rehab services. And I wanna be where you are in your background. Um, so do I. <laughs> Then I have Ellen. Hi, just getting connected here. Ellen, I'm from Alexandria, Minnesota, at home in Fergus Falls right now today on my day off. So good to be here. Well, Ellen, thank you for being here on your day off. Really appreciate it. Um, just so you know, your connection is a little bit choppy, so it might help to turn your video off. Um, did I miss anybody? I think we got everyone. So again, so happy you guys are here and excited for our next steps in conversation. I think I'll turn it over to you, Paul. All right. Thanks. Yeah, I am excited too. I've been waiting for this a long time. So I I've been working on the vault for a lot of years and, you know, some people have used it here and there and we've heard some great things about it, but we've never had the opportunity to really dig in and figure out how can this be used to um, actually improve uh, teaming and communication and, you know, just really helping <clears throat> people who utilize their services um, really 
have better lives and, and uh, communicate more easily. So um, I'm excited that you're all willing to participate. <clears throat> and I wanted to just make sure, I know a lot of questions have come in from across all different uh, districts and counties and um, VR offices about what this is and what it looks like. So I just wanted to give an overview um, and kind of talk about it and answer your questions. Um, I can show you an example of what it could look like, what would be expected, because I know that's a big thing. Like we don't want to add just one more thing to everybody's plates, right? Um, so, because I know everybody is busy and overwhelmed. And so really the goal of this is to make everybody's lives easier, not, not more difficult. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions as I'm going through stuff, just uh, feel free to jump in or to throw them in the chat. <clears throat> I'm gonna show my, sh my screen. Um, I hope, here we go. Okay, so I sent this, or Alyssa, I guess, um, sent this out the other day. She sent three documents, um, the PowerPoint that I'll be kind of referencing today. Um, and then she also sent the instructions for creating a vault account and also this, the project scope. So as we were, <clears throat> excuse me, working on implementing the MOU and we're doing the ECBC, um, there was <clears throat> the MOU, I should say, between the Department of Human Services and Voc Rehab. Um, there was a lot of attention or a lot of, it, it kept coming up that um, really a big thing that's missing in the collaboration between um, the partners, so VR and schools and, um, and the counties, is a way to communicate with each other uh, and to share documents and share information um, and to all be kind of on the same page. So that's really, um, the vault was created uh, and, and all of you hopefully have seen the vault. Has anybody, is anybody completely just not even aware of what the vault is? And it's okay if you're, you can either raise your hand or put something in the chat. Okay, so I'm gonna go along. I think then everybody knows basically what the vault is. Um, so just sharing with you a little bit about, um, you know, there's some information about the background of the vault. You can read in there if you want to. Um, the objectives of the vault, we, we, the pilot, um, we really want to test how my vault can be used to uh, improve person-centered planning and that interagency coordination. That's really the goal of this whole pilot is to see, um, now we have Voc Rehab and counties and schools all working together. How do you share your contact information? How do you share documents? Um, and then also, um, there are a lot of benefits for the students as well. You know, having a place, another thing we heard is students don't really have a place to store stuff after they graduate from high school, right? They all have their Google accounts um, and they have Google Docs and stuff, but that's attached to their, their school email a lot of times. And so when they graduate from, from school, the transition or high school, it, it, they don't keep it. Um, and so they ha have to have something else set up. <clears throat> so we wanna take a look at, uh, at how that can help with that as well. Um, and making sure that um, the, the biggest reason the vault was created to begin with was to make sure that people on our programs, getting our services and supports have access to their own information. So a lot of times I know, um, you know, I work mostly with counties and lead agencies on the waiver side, um, but I have also heard it across the system that, you know, people get a lot of information um, kind of about them. There's a lot of information out there and, and then they get stuff and it doesn't make sense and they don't know what it is and things like that. So this also will give people a way to have their own information. So <clears throat> especially working with benefits for me, um, you know, people get information from social security, they get letters, they get letters from the counties, they get letters from schools, they get letters from everywhere, right? And um, a lot of what we send out isn't electronic. So this can also be a way to help them have their information in an electronic way um, and, and to be able to keep it. So a little about the stakeholders. So we're again, hoping to show how this kind of teaming and working together will work. So we've got, I know a few of you, a couple of you anyway, are work-based learning coordinators, school case managers, and then we've got some of you who are waiver case managers, um, VR counselors and other staff, uh, placement coordinators and, and uh, different different staff from VR. And then we also, really the pilot is really 
contingent on youth and families also participating, right? So <clears throat> a question that has come up is what if, we, you know, we've got a student or two or five in mind who, who might want to be part of the pilot, but what if they say no? What if, you know, they don't want to create their own vault accounts? We hope that they will want to, but if they don't, we can still use it to team and to figure out how do we share information and um, use it in a way uh, with professionals as well. All right. So um, do any of you have questions at this point right now about anything before I get into what's kind of expected from the from the pilot? In, um, Beth, this is Lindsay. So I didn't, I don't see any questions. However, I can't remember who because they turned their camera off, but somebody did kind of raise their hand. Oh, maybe it was um, about not being familiar with the vault. So I just want to make sure that person kind of has a good understanding um, moving forward. Okay, and I great. think it was Karen Bangus. Um, yeah, that's good. Um, this is Karen. I just went to the training the other day that just explained it. So if that's what you mean, that's my understanding is what yep. we, okay. At All least right. you've seen it, you, you kind yeah. of know it exists and a little bit about what it is. I'll go through it in, in more detail in just a little bit. I just okay. um, wanted to make sure everybody kind of had it. Thanks. <clears throat> All right, so um, with the expected approach and involvement, um, I have two screens. So that's why I'm looking at the camera and looking at my other screen. Um, so just to let you know, we are uh, planning for whoever is going to participate. So, so if it's teachers who are working with the students, if it's uh, you know specific case managers, um, VR counselors, uh, you know placement coordinators, whoever whoever it is, we will provide training on the vault and and how to use it. It's pretty simple and self-explanatory. Of course, I've been working with it for a lot of years, so I can I can say that. But um, from other people have said too, it's it's a pretty easy thing to do, and I'll show it to you in a little bit. So we would uh, provide that training about how to effectively use the vault. Um, the people who participate would create their own vault accounts. So the teachers, BR counselors, case managers, um, waiver and and school case managers um, would all create their own vault accounts and that will allow them to be able to save and store information in their own account and share it with others and also share their contact information with others which i'll show you in a little bit um, and then also just this is an old version um, we said at, starting off we would love to see every per, every uh, uh professional who is participating in the uh the pilot to identify at least five students that they support to utilize the vault with. That would be fantastic. If they can get between one and five, that would be great too. So, um, you know, as, as many as we could get would be great to just kind of see how this works. So, and that would mean helping the students um, register their own vault account, which I'll show you, um, build their employment team, which I'll also show you, and then also sharing some of the documents like IEPs or their NCIS reports or their um, employment plans or their um, waiver uh, community support plans, <clears throat> excuse me, sharing some of those kind of items and documents uh, between team members through the, the person sharing them themselves. Um, and then also uh, you see in here, I put in if the student chooses because it's always a student's choice, right? We're not gonna make them do anything that they don't wanna do, um, but sharing those plans with their team members and then um, using the tools in the, in the vault, which I'll show you a little bit more, <clears throat> excuse me. And then just really this reporting. Um, so we're gonna have regular check-in meetings to see how things are going, um, answer questions. I'm always available to, to answer any questions as we go along with this. Um, but I do want some report back and I would get a template for a report uh, for you to kind of just report what works and what doesn't work. Um, are there improvements that we need to make to the vault? Um, does, you know, what aspects of it really work well and what aspects could be better or different? Um, that is the kind of stuff that we're going to, we're going to want to hear. So then this next section just talks about the benefits, which we already talked about if you were on the ACDC um, <clears throat> excuse me, presentation a few weeks ago, you can look through those. Um, and then the timeframes. So 
um, we are starting in February. It's going to run through July, but really we would love to see in this first month kind of <clears throat> um, get some idea of how it could work because July 1st is when we're officially implementing the uh, memorandum of understanding between uh, VR and DHS. So um, we really would love to see how it could be used in that, in that process as well. Um, so that's the time frame. Uh, and then we have some milestones. Um, we are identifying districts. So I think I can take out the question marks. So it's Wilmer, District 287, um, and uh, Northern Lights, right? Do we have yes. others? Did I? Okay. All right. I'm just taking notes. Okay. All right, so the rest of this, um, we're just Leslie, going to- Leslie, are you trying to say something? I think you were muted. Wasn't, isn't somebody from like Alexandria on? Alexandria, I'm sorry. Yes, I did miss <coughs> Alexandria. Yes, for sure. All right, thanks. Great, so Alexandria, Wilmer, District 287 and Northern Lights, four, perfect. All right. Um, these dates. I, I do see Alexandra is still thinking about it. Yeah. Okay. And, and that's what this meeting really is, is just everybody's still kind of thinking about it, right? And trying to figure out how it's going to work and what are we going to be able to do? Um, so that's, that's totally fine. Um, we had some dates in here to identify some students. Uh, you know, it's the 19th day. We're not going to have them identified by the 22nd. Um, some, I know a couple of you already have mentioned that you have students in mind that you think this would be helpful for. So that's great. We can, um, we can get that, that going with those, those students. Um, we will revise these dates. But in March, we would like to start seeing some students identified and start using the vault with those, with those students. <clears throat> All right, so it talks about inclusions and exclusions. The, um, success factors are a couple of things. We, we need professionals participating in the pilot really need to use it. That will be the biggest thing. Um, and then students being able to see how they can use it as well. <clears throat> and these assumptions, you know, we're all here on with the Employment First philosophy. We're all moving toward the same goal of helping helping youth to be able to um, find employment. And um, this interest in finding better ways to collaborate was another big thing that we heard a lot. So again, I have a little blurb in there about if the person doesn't want to use the vault or changes their mind midstream or whatever, you know, we, we know those things will come up and, and that's okay. All right. So I'm going to pause and see if you have any questions before we jump into, I'll, I'll show you what it kind of looks like and, and what would be involved. Anybody have any questions? Okay. All right. Let me make sure. <clears throat> so all of you received this PowerPoint as well. And so in the PowerPoint, um, the second slide has the link to the Disability Hub MN website. If you wanna go in there and follow along with me, um, you're welcome to do that. It might be easier for you to kind of see um, and get a feel for, for what it might look like. Uh, let me just take a look and make sure I didn't miss anything. That's All while right. you're doing that, there was sure. a question in the chat of confidentiality. Um, what about that? Yeah, great question. So it's the one that comes up more than any other question I, I get. Um, so um, confidentiality with the vault, uh, the, the cool thing is you, you register your own account. The student register, registers their own account. Um, it is secure. They register it with a, uh, their own email and then they have a password that is only theirs. That makes it secure. It's also encrypted. So the information that's put into it, our developers can't even see it because it's all jumbled. So when anything is sent, it's all encrypted. Um, so that makes it secure. And then also as far as sharing information between team members, I know it comes up a lot. What about the confidentiality with that? 
Well, the cool thing in it is that in the, the way we hope the pilot will work is that the person, the student will be sharing their own information. So with the student sharing their own information, no releases are needed. So if you've got a, you're working with a student and you know, you, you're like, oh, well, here's the IEP. Um, and it would re really be great for the case manager to know what's in there and also for the VR counselor to know what's in there. You can help the student load the IEP into their own account and share it with their team members. So that way you don't need releases because it's the student sharing their own information. So that would ideally be the way things would work. Um, that would be the best route. We know that that doesn't always happen, right? So if they can't do that or they don't want to do that, um, then you could share the information between yourselves, but you would need to have a release of information. So that still holds true um, in order to share information between agencies. All the HIPAA rules still apply. So you would have to get a release of information, have that on hand, and then you could share uh, between, the, uh, you know, between the team members. Does that make sense? And does that answer your question, whoever had that question? Let's see, that was Yolanda and I don't actually see Yolanda anymore. Oh, I see her there. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Can, can I ask a question um, kind of spinning off of that? So um, what if, if these are minors or individuals with disabilities that have a guardian and they're controlling the my vault, how, how do you navigate through that process when, when they're saying, sure, share it, um, but we need to be sure that the parent or guardian has given that approval? Yeah. That's a good question too. So definitely guardians and parents need to be involved, um, but also knowing where they're, um, how much they are responsible for and how much they do have to give consent to and for, um, you know, just because they're a guardian doesn't mean that they get to control everything. Um, the person does still have some, some freedom of choice in, uh, in what they want to do. So with that in mind, yes, definitely include the guardian. Um, they would need to, to know, you know that this person wants to set up a vault account um, and, uh, and needs to be okay with it as well. So bringing the families along is gonna be important. Making sure they understand what the vault is, why they're setting it up, what it could be used for, um, how it's you know, secure. That's, that's a big question we get from, from families a, a lot is how, how do I know it's secure? I don't want all this information in there. Helping them understand that whole thing of, you, you know, they probably do their banking or their bills online or whatever, um, you know, it's as secure as that. It's the same kind of thing. And it, and it gives the, the person with a disability the ability to have their own information and to do some of the stuff that, that people without disabilities would be able to do. Um, so kind of approaching it from that way, if there's, you know, if they're cautious about it, that's kind of how I have, I have talked about it and helped them understand that, you know, it's a, it's a way for people to be able to store their own information and to have all their stuff in one spot. Um, it can really make their lives easier. You know, one of the, one of the ways the vault was created, uh, one of the reasons was um, we were working a lot with people who were homeless and they had nowhere to store or to keep their information. You know, they were getting stuff sent to the homeless shelters and, there was just, it was all over and they were losing things. So um, having that central place to store stuff is really important. Um, and then they can access it, like I said, at any time, you know, if they're 50 years old and they still have a vault account, their stuff's still going to be there um, and they can get into it. So helping families and guardians along is going to be important too. And the other thing is the family and the guardian can create their own vault account as well. Um, and one thing that people get really confused about a lot is, well, I'm going into their vault account, but no, nobody goes into each other's vault account. We share information from one vault account to another. So I might have a document in my vault account that I share with Liz. Um, and then Liz can say, yep, I want that in my account. Or she can say, no, nope, I don't want that in my account and I'm not going to accept it. Um, so I don't ever go into Liz's vault account. Uh, I, I might sit with Liz and help her load something into her vault account but it's not my vault account. I'm not gonna go into, into hers. So um, that's a, yeah, that's a great question that comes up a lot. 
So Beth, this is Amanda Cook. I, I have one question that pertains to kind of that same thinking. Um, and I guess it's more towards the release of information. I know for our district, we request um, a release of information on an annual basis. Um, and I guess I'm wondering, can you speak to that maybe a little bit more? And if it's built in the program or in the system that the student is giving or the guardian is giving permission um, and, and how often that's done, if that's done on an annual basis or, or what that looks like. Sure. Yeah, so the release of information, um, uh, so first of all, I'm not a lawyer, <laughs> so I can speak to it from, um, from what I do know, just because of what I've what I've talked with and dealt with um, in the in the process. So, um, so release of information is your standard release of information, right? Most of them are good for a year. Most most organizations have releases of information that are a year long, um, and the person can withdraw them anytime. So that covers you for. To talk, to talk to whoever is identified on that release of information, right? So if you have an ROI that's signed in the beginning of the year that says, I agree that I can, um, that I'm going to allow Amanda Cook to share information with my county case manager and with my voc rehab counselor, um, and that's on file, then it's good until they withdraw it or until the year comes. So having them sign it every year would be a fine thing to do. There's no specific thing for the vault to sign to say, I am agreeing to a vault account or anything because they're doing it themselves. So they're creating their own vault account. And it's no different than if they created their own Google account or their own you know, bank account or whatever. Um, it's, it's theirs and they, they get to choose whether or not they do it. Does that make sense? And does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Okay, great. Amanda, I feel like you could compare it to MCIS in terms of you can ensure that that follows them um, and you don't necessarily need a new annual um, release of information for MCIS. So I have a question from the school again. So I have everything electronically. It's at my fingertips. I can share it off with who needs it when I have the release. What's the advantage for me as a school employee or any of my case managers to have this vault account? I totally get it for the kids. I totally feel, yes, this is the wave of the future for them. But why do I need it? Why do my school people need it? That is a great question. And actually that's what I've been asking myself that just because just thinking, oh, and Alyssa joined. Hi, Alyssa. Um, so just thinking about, uh, so you can do your work without a vault account, right? Um, and if you have an efficient, good way that you do that and, uh, and it makes sense and it's, you know, you're keeping track of stuff and it's working, then um, I would say that there might not be a lot of reason for the uh, the professional to have their own vault account other than for this pilot we want to test a couple things so um, the sharing of contact information is a big big piece um, so allowing the person to create their employment team which it'll probably help if I show you so I'm going to jump into that um, so allowing the person to create their own employment team if you all have vault accounts they'll be able to share that information and you'll be able to know who each other are. And so I, I'm getting the sense that you all probably already have that um, and, and that's in place. If you, you know you know who the case managers are and who the, the teachers are and who the, you know, the placement coordinators or whoever, you've got that. There are a lot of teams out there who don't know. Um, and so this provides a way, having a vault account provides a way to be able to share contact information. So I could be the student who, who creates, I'm gonna create my team and I'm gonna have my VR counselor and my, um, uh, my work-based learning coordinator and my voc rehab counselor and my case manager all on the, uh, in my team. And I'm gonna hit a button and say, share um, all these contacts and they'll share with everybody. So that is one benefit. And another benefit is, it's secure. Um, some uh, organizations I know don't have a way to send secure email. 
Um, I, I, we run into counties a lot that say they can't send things electronically because it's not secure. So this is a way to share information that is that is secure and you know that it's it's encrypted. Um, and then the other thing is, I'll show you, it will sort your files. If you, um, if you have a professional role, um, it can help you keep track of who you sent what to. Um, so why don't I jump in and, and show you. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna show you is how to create a vault account. So I've gone to the disabilityhubmn.org website, which all of you could go to if you wanna, if you're able to, if you wanna follow along. Um, so up here on the top, it says sign into my vault. And that is where you would click, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And if you haven't, if you're new to the vault, you can create an account right here. So it's super simple. You just put in your email address and I have a lot of them because I do this a lot. Um, and you create a password. And then you confirm your password. Hopefully I have it right. And so for students, this is what they would do. I just look like I have it right. Um, they would just go in and create their password. And that makes it theirs, right? So they use their own um, email address and their own password. Um, the teachers or uh, you know counselors or whoever use their own email address and their own passwords. Um, and then you can choose if you're any one of these organizations. So you can do that or you can just say none of these. Okay. So when I submit that, um, oh, I also, sorry, should mention we, we um, included. So if I say I'm from VR and I'm an employment professional, um, and need these ProVault tools, you can click on that and it will give you those, um, that access to the professional layout in the vault. So that's, and, and you would have a vault account as soon as you created that. So I already have one, I didn't create another one, but that's as easy, it, it takes, you know, less than five minutes to do it. Um, students will have to have their own personal email address to sign up. Um, so, you, you know, helping them create that will be important as well. All right, let me sign in as, I don't remember which one, let me try this one. Okay, so now I signed in, I, I created the account and then I went and signed in and here you can see I'm logged on up here. Um, and then you can click on my vault. And if I'm going too fast, if you have questions, just feel free to shout out. And I can't see the chat while I'm sharing my screen. So, um, all right, so this is the vault landing page and you can see there are uh, planning paths, there are files and contacts. We're gonna kind of just go through a couple of these things because the vault has a lot in it. I'm not gonna show you everything in there. Um, if you wanna explore it, you certainly can. We're gonna focus on three things. We're gonna focus on creating contacts, saving files and sharing files, All right? So the first thing, um, as we would go through training, I would teach people how to create a contact. So I click on that. First thing they need to do is create their own contact information. So right up here on the uh, right-hand side, it says my contact info. Um, and let's hope it's going to work today. This happens sometimes when I'm doing Zoom and um, and the Hub at the same time. It will not show. Sorry. Let's try this instead. I'm going to use a different browser because sometimes it's just better to use this. All right, let's try that again. Beth, while you're doing that, I still keep processing. Um, I think it was Kim, you had asked like, why would I do this? And I just feel like as an educator, I just wanna chime in a little bit about that piece in terms of why we would wanna do the vault. I don't know if we can think of those times where we have VRS at the table, county at the table, we're at an IEP meeting or an eval meeting and um, we're sharing reports with one another 
whether that be via paper or uh, via email, and we may or may not be able to email it. Um, I think that provides an opportunity where you could upload it into the vault into that particular student with that particular student so that everybody can access it as a professional. I just feel like I wanted to chime that piece in. Thanks. All right, so now it let me in here. Um, and so I have already entered my own information in here. So I'll show you what it looks like to do that. So first thing you'd have the student or the, the professional who's doing this is put their own first and last name in, all of their information about their address, their email address and all of that. And that way it will allow people to send them information and it'll be stored in there. All right, so let me just save it. The other thing they can do is create contacts for the people on their team. So I have, uh, well, McDonald is my only contact. So I created um, one with just an email address. I can edit that person. I can create new contacts by just clicking this add contacts. And this is what would come up. So I will put in Alyssa. I'm going to make up a, a title for you. <laughs> uh, and I can say, and so I put the email and the phone number. And then I just save it. And so now Alyssa is in my contacts. So I could build a contact, help the, help the student build a contact for each of the team members, right? Um, and that way they would, they would be able to have everybody they need to have on their, their list. So another thing I wanna show you about that, let's shrink my screen a little bit is the, the paths. So on this main screen of the paths, you will see there's this build an employment team way at the bottom. And like I said, we would give in-depth training and a guide, um, the guide that you have that I sent you kind of talks about some of these things as well. So um, this, the student or you yourself could go in and build this employment team. So we have people you could choose from. So if you have a VR, counselor, um, you could say, okay, uh, Alyssa is my VR counselor. I'm gonna add her to my team. I have a school case manager and we're gonna say old McDonald is my school case manager. And you could add any of these. You could also add other people. So maybe I wanna add my dad. And I don't have him in here yet. So I want to say dad's here. And his email is and so I have saved him. Oh, sorry. My dad has to have a last name. And I'm going to save him to my team as well. So now I have all of those people on my team. When I create a document or I save a document in the vault, I can say I want to share and I can say I want to share with my whole employment team. Um, or I can share with just one person. I can share with whoever I want to. So, <clears throat> excuse me, once I have all my names added in um, and the, uh, um, the uh, information will also say a little bit about what that role is. You can see I, it's built a team and I have all my contacts here and it tells me who they are and a little bit about what they do. So it can really help people understand who's on their team and who can help them with what as well. Um, the other thing I can do, um, go back to the paths, um, in my contact list. So now let's say here's Alyssa, she's my VR counselor. 
and O McDonald is my school case manager. And I want Alyssa to know that O McDonald is my case manager, or is my yeah, school case manager. Um, so I'm gonna say, sorry, I should show you what I did. So O McDonald is my school case manager, and I want Alyssa to know. And so I click on this little share icon, and I say I want I want to send this to Alyssa, and I click send. It sent Alyssa that contact information. So this is one way that the team can really get formulated and you can share information and, and share the contacts um, with each other. So that's one thing we would ask everybody to do is make sure everybody on the team knows who each other are. And we would we'd want the student to share that information, but you could share it with each other as well. So the other thing um, we talked about adding files, and this is what it would look like um, for for you. Sorry, scrolling all over. Um, I've added some files in here already, um, and it's super easy. Um, you just drag and drop. So I'm going to minimize this. Maybe. And. Uh, I'm sorry, I've got a lot of things open. And then I'm going to go back to my... So, sorry, it's shrunk my um, screen. So I'm gonna show you though. So I'm gonna drag this document. I'll drag the vault instructions. I just plop it in there takes a little bit. And now you can see that the vault instructions are there. So it's as simple as that. All you do is if you have it on your desktop, you drag it over, plop it in there and it saves in there, right? So what you could do um, if you are sharing uh, sorry, <laughs> if you are sharing information um, for the specific student and that student has a vault account, you will see down here, it, it sorts it for you. So if you're working with Jim and you have a file that you um, get from him, you could open it up. So if Alyssa sends me a document, it's going to go, it's going to show up in Alyssa's file. Right, I'm going to be able to sort that information by student or by person. So Alyssa, I know, is the VR counselor for this person. So I can click on her and see what has she sent me or what do I have that's related to Alyssa. So it does some sorting for you as well. These are just the files that I have saved into my own vault. And this is what a student's, this is what the student's um, vault would look like. They wouldn't have my contacts files. Well, that's only for professionals. So, and then if I have the vault instructions and I wanna share that with somebody, so maybe I've saved my IEP into here um, and I wanna share it with my, um, with people on my team, I can say, I wanna share it with all these people. And then I can type in a message if I want to and send it and it goes to all those people. So, and that's really, um, the main thing of what we want this pilot um, to be and to do. So it's a pretty small set of, of stuff to do. Um, and like um, Lindsay said, being able to share that information with each other will be super helpful. So do you guys have questions? Other things you want to know? There is a question in the chat. I can read it to you. It says, do you get an email alert when information is shared or do you need to log in to attain that information? No, great question. Yes, you do get an email alert when something is shared. It'll just be a little, um, a little blurb saying you received a file um, and then you can click on it and it will take you into your vault. The other thing is when something is shared or something is needing action, it will show up here. There's a little notification bell I don't have anything waiting right now, but if I did, it would it would show what it is. 
And then, so like if the list had sent me a file, it would show up here and it would say, do you want to accept this? So I could say yes. And then it would load it into my file. If I said no, it would just disregard it. There's another, there's a couple more questions in the chat. Should I read them off for you? That would be great. Thanks. I can't see it when I'm presenting. Yeah. Um, does that person have to have a vault account to receive that file? Great question. No, they do not. So if I send something out of my vault to somebody who doesn't have a vault account, it will still go to their email. It just, you know, there's no vault to put it into. So um, they'll get an email saying that this was sent. And the cool thing is it's still secure. So if I send something out of my vault, it goes out in a secure email. So once that person gets it, I mean, it's important to remember that whatever is in your email, it's no longer secure. So, you know, if I send it to Alyssa and then Alyssa sends it on to somebody else from her email, same, same thing as any other email that was, was sent, it wouldn't be secure. But if, if you send it within the vault, so if I sent something to Alyssa within the vault, it would go to her vault securely. And then if she sent something to me um, through her vault, it would be sent to me securely as well. Great question. Is there another one? Yeah, there's another one. It says, so for simplicity's sake, it would be best for the student to share all documents so that a professional has all documents for that student listed under that student, right? Meaning right. If, VR, if VRS sends me their plan for a student, and the special ed case manager sends me the IEP for that same student, I would have to click on multiple professionals to access to documents for one student. Right, yeah. So this, yeah, that's a great question and a great point. So it kind of, it goes back to the fact that it would, it's best, best practice to have the students share their own information. Um, so you're right, if, if, um, Old McDonald is the student and Alyssa is the VR counselor and dad is the person's dad. If dad and Alyssa send me stuff, it's going to go into their files. I'm going to see it under their name, right? But if Old McDonald sends it to me and, and he's the student, then it's all going to be under his, his file. I'm going to see all the documents here. So yeah, that's a really great point. So um, and, and that's really the point of the vault and, and what we, the, the strongest use of the vault is to help individuals themselves have their own information and share their own information. So they learn how to do that. Um, and so that it's all in, in one place. So that's best practice. And if that can happen or doesn't happen, you can also find it, you know, in other places. There another one. Yeah, one more question. Can you send files from one vault to another or is it only sent to email and then they need to upload it into their vault? Nope, great question. You can send from, from vault to vault. So Alyssa has a vault account and I have a vault account. I just sent Alyssa a document, which Alyssa, you're gonna have, you're gonna have emails um, and stuff in your vault account. Um, so, so what happened when I sent that document to Alyssa a notification went to her email that said something new is you have you have something new in your that was shared to your vault and so since she has a vault account she will then need to go to her vault account she will have a little icon here uh, a notification and she'll click on that and accept it and it will show up in her vault does that make sense answer the question um Another question is, if they decide they don't want a document in the vault anymore, can it be deleted? Great question. Yes, it can be. So over here, um, you just click on the little icon for the file, and there's a list of things that you can do with it. So, and one of those is to delete it. Another one. Okay. Does anybody have any other questions? Beth, I'm assuming this is Ellen Anderson uh, from Alexandria. I'm assuming this is probably going to come in the more in depth training. 
But some of those plans you showed earlier, uh, my colleagues and I were looking at yesterday, and um, there's some really interesting questions and plans uh, that the kids can, the students can go through and complete. And then I'm a, we couldn't find it, but I'm assuming there's a report that will will assemble itself after they answer some of these, go through some of these checklists. Is that correct? Right, yep, that's a really great point. Um, after every activity, so like when we built that employment plan, our employment team, um, at the end I said, do the results and everything that you do in here can be created into a PDF. So I could um, pull that, that list of all the people on my employment team and create a PDF of it and have a have a report. So I think what you're talking about um, the planning paths. This is a whole. This is another section of the vault that um, you know we're going to touch on a little bit in the training. Um, I don't want to overwhelm anyone. Uh, if people want more information, I'd be happy to go through all of these. One thing. So so we have two different sections right now. We're in the process of building the employment path. We don't have it yet. So we have a benefits planning path and we have a housing pass. Um, one thing that people uh, uh, in the ECBC a couple of years ago, um, we had everybody, every uh, team do this um, to go in and do a benefit lookup. So a benefit lookup is just a way for the person, the, the student to be able to know what benefits they're on. Because if they're thinking about work, it's gonna be important for them to know what benefits they're on, right? So get a benefits lookup, you just go in and you um, can say, you know, tells you a little bit about it, tells you, uh, or it, you tell us, per, uh, the person requests their own, they put their first and last name in, um, they can also have a copy sent to the counselor or to whoever they want to have it sent to, and then it'll generate a report back to them saying what benefits they're on. So are, there are different activities that, that you could do. Um, you know, case managers, educators, whoever wants to can go in and do different things in here and answer different questions. Um, uh, so maybe I want to do a quick budget. I want to see, you know, what, will, what it will look like. Sorry. It's, um, what are my, my monthly income? And, you know, what benefits do I have? Uh, And then you can do some stuff with the expenses. You know, I'm gonna have $400 rent. I don't know where I'm gonna live because that's really cheap, but maybe I have a roommate. Uh, and then you can put different things in. And, and so it will at the end generate a report of this activity and it'll show you um, and you say, okay, what if I went to work? You can do different things like that. So yeah, there are a lot of different activities that you can do in the vault. Um, and in addition to the making contacts and saving files, um, for the pilot, we're going to really focus on that sharing and saving files and, and saving contacts. But if there are other things that your team wants to do in there, they're certainly welcome. At the end of the activity, then it'll show you, you know, the summary. What does that look like? Um, and then you can you can create a PDF. Uh, of any of the activities as well up here. Yeah, Melissa. Oh, I, I think that um, we, I think uh, there's another meeting that Lindsay has on her yeah. Zoom account. Right we are done. <laughs> okay, I, I know there's other questions. I've um, copied them. And how about we um, answer them in an email to everybody that that was on. I hopefully have everyone's email address. So I'll, I'll share those with you, Beth. And then sounds good. We'll All right, email. Guys, but yeah, I you could stay on if you want to. And I, I don't I think I can open the other one. I just can't stay. It's okay. I think we can be done. So I'll answer the questions via email. And um, also, I'll send out a doodle poll to find out what's a good date to set up a training for everybody so that we can do the deeper um, training. And in the meantime, feel free to Email me if you have questions. Um, and thank you all. This was this was great. I'm excited. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.